I'd be quite careful with your next set of words, Cryptek. Trezan spoke with venom. Trezan's empathic obliterator sparked with dangerous green sparks. My legs are actually quaking. I, 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 I mean, I would like to see if I could help you cure it. I can feel my words getting caught on my mouth. I know his short-term memory was compromised if I could only, in theory, repair him. He seemed to consider the idea, but he still hasn't lowered his weapon from my throat. Eventually, Trezan gestured to me to start walking. I complied at risk of getting destroyed. I don't want to test out reanimating, plus death sounds like it would hurt. He led me out of his War in Heaven gallery. I kept looking around at what was available in his gallery. That did help calm me down. Do you truly believe you can repair Sinet? Trezan finally asked after three days of silence. With some effort, I could probably get his long-term memory working, I admit. He eventually led me to what appeared to be some sort of canoptech workshop. The old crypt tech was laid down across a black stone table. Instruments my mind instantly recognised as artisan and artificer tools lined various tables. It felt like I was walking into an operating theatre. You will be provided every tool at my disposal. I expect results from you, crypt tech. Right into them. I didn't expect to be going into this operation right away. I didn't have any choice. I would actually need to fix his mind. I grabbed a necrodermis needle off one of the tables and tore open Sinet's head. The next set of months has spent carefully identifying the degraded path of circuit networks of his brain, if it could be called that. Untangling the burnt circuitry from the rest of his brain took a better half of a year, even with the help from Shara Detella and the tools at my disposal. I would need to replace it with something that could withstand the ages. I searched through my own neural banks, trying to find what parts I could use to fix the net. I took a quick run through the collected footage I had in Trezan's gallery, and the solution came to me. Trezan, I'm going to need to take a small piece of your gallery to repair Sinet. What is it that you actually need? He inquired. I need to take a few parts from that Jokoro ship. We returned to the family of stasis trap Jokoro. Me, Trezan, and a Canoptech Wraith set to work dismantling the inner computing systems of the ship. We gutted the thing, setting aside complex networks of power packs, metallic bulbs of unknown usage, and eventually a part that I believed we needed. We eventually found a series of Euclidean processing nodes that more or less matched what I needed. These bad boys would do the trick. I just need to bury them and connect them to the hundreds of different smaller systems and ensure they couldn't decay again. I probably need to coat them in something. I took a small glance at my scarab. His golden, hyper-durable gilding gave me an idea. The next five years had been spent simply transmuting more of the gilding material I used on Shardy Otella. I feel a bit stupid for not realising it was Oramite sooner. My scarab and Trezan have been calling it Iskar, which I don't mind. I begin the painstaking process of fusing and interweaving the nodes and Oramite together. My hands don't get tired, but my mind sure is. I'm constantly reciting dozens of metallurgy rituals as the metals bind with one another. Eventually the new neural work is complete, and the hard part of actually adding this to his existing system starts. I spent years grafting the new neural matrix in with what previously existed, tediously fusing them along the previous pathways and finding that I had significantly more than I had intended to use. They were already 273 connected points at this point, and all I could do was find ways to integrate the additional systems. All in all, I had spent 14 years operating on Sinet. When the operation was complete, I reshaped the top portion of his necrodermis death mask. There was a nice oramite plate that connected from where his nasal cavity started and the back of his cranium ended. All that was left to do was to reawaken him, which I was more than confident I could do. I took a deep breath... Joining my fingers into ancient designs, I begin the string of algorithm chants, a part of the reanimation protocols. Drazan had been watching me intently for the last three years, and I don't want to fuck this up. I dial back my chronosense. He was stressing me out. There's no way I could have even one thing wrong. The rights of reanimation was drawn out for another year. As ensured, I went above and beyond. The ritual orb at my back crackled with electric discharge, and wine from the overuses, it was truly putting everything I had into this one ritual. My fingers burned intensely with a bale fire that threatened to consume me. Having prepared above and beyond, I pumped everything into the cryptech. Sinet was burning brightly. The light burned white in my ocular. 
Something in the depths of my consciousness stirred. Something I wasn't entirely aware of. I saw flashes of someone. A withered husk of a person standing over me. No, not standing, but shielding me from the blistering heat of a star. My thoughts slipped away from the visions as reality asserted itself and banished the thought before I could process what I had seen. Sinet has arisen now, standing on both feet above me, crackling with the balefire green of this world. The crackling with a deep, dark purple energy. The void mancer was supercharged in the balefire of reanimation. Sinet's one eye stared down at me and then to his overlord, Trezan. The shimmering links of essence totems that hung from his shoulders popped and sparked with power. Sinet spoke, his vocal admitter booming with presence. My lord. I could see he was confused. His systems had been functioning at criminally inefficient levels. He couldn't exactly be considered a cryptech when he couldn't remember if he had already cast his hexes. But now... It was all rushing back to him, his own neural matrixes working, not overworked with the essence of energy and memory capacity at his disposal. Trezan spoke up. Sinet, how do you feel? Was all he could bring himself to say. I feel powerful, my overlord, as though I could wield all of my faculties to greater efficiencies. In fact, Sinet's entire being dispersed in an instance. The reverberations of electrical discharge rang out. My own mnemonics struggled to identify what that sound was, cross-referencing it with thousands of memories from my body's past. When I did come to the conclusion, I realised that the sound had sounded eerily similar to that of when a death mark opens up their dimensional oubliette. Sinet reappears beside Trezan with a crackling series of pops. I am operating above capacity, my lord. I am honestly exhausted after that procedure. One of my wraiths pumped me full of the ambient energy he had tucked away. I thanked the wraith and gave it the first name that came to mind. After getting my bearings, I looked to Sinet as he was still cackling with energy and balefire. You are a dimensionalist. Your focus works much like that of the death marks? I asked. Sinet gave a nod before looking back to his lord. I think the pair were having some sort of call that I wasn't privy to. I need a fucking break. It's been like 34 years since I initially woke up. Be first Scythe Agahet. Lichgard of the Voket dynasty. For the last 42 million years, I and fellow Lichgard, Kem Farret, have been standing vigil over High Transmographer Ishakar by order of the Pharaon. We've been instructed that should he awaken preemptively, we are to serve under him unwaveringly until the rest of the dynasty awakens. Without any real surprise, the Cryptech has indeed awoken ahead of schedule. We are sent off to gather a host of warriors and Cryptechs. We oblige without question. The workings of the Cryptech is not something we should question. Ishakar works to bring the warriors to life. His ritual seems to take an exceedingly long time. It also seems he has some sort of resurrection orb of an immense size implanted on his back. Witnessing his reanimation protocols are quite the spectacle. Those awoken by his overly performed ritual burn with power in excess. Brother Kemfard informs through interstitial messaging the orb implanted in his back is where he has drawn forth the energy excess. Quite curious, was this a boon granted by the Faeron? I should not consider such possibilities. They are above my station. Our ship makes way for the Nihilak dynasty. The reasons as to why are beyond me. For now, me and my brother remain sentinel beside our wards. One of the Lord's scarabs seems to be trying to communicate with us. It shows us a replica of the very ship we are aboard. The scarab brings up the proposal of a training simulation. Brother Kemfarit seems quite amused by it, so I relent and approve. After several trials, we present it to our Lord. Naturally, the Lord takes well to the simulation. In fact, it would appear the Cryptech has extensive skills for void combat. He modifies the simulation to include hundreds of scenarios, or threats, and encourages us to practice. Clearly he wishes to see if we will be found wanting. I dive into practicing the simulations, constantly playing back our Lord's tactics and trying to improve. I've spent the past 26 years, while our Lord has been occupied, constantly improving my skill in void-based combat. Eventually our Lord returns from his meeting with Trezan. One wraith carried him back to the ship. I can see our Lord is in deep meditations. I will not disturb him. Instead, I will try to inform Voidmancer Fanonet of her lord's return. Unfortunately, I find her and the other four cryptechs also in deep meditations. 
For now all I can do is watch over my cryptex. And so watch, and I wait, and I still crave more of the simulations the Lord has made. Be overlord of Solomon's, Trezan. The operation of Sinet was a resounding success. Not only has Sinet's memory been restored, but his own dimensional capabilities have been significantly improved for the first time. By Sinet's estimations, when his balefire ends in approximately 10 years, his neuromatrixes will still be operating at 150% efficiency. This cryptech, Ishakar, a skilled harbinger of transmogrification and techromancer. Not only that, but he must have greater, if not equal, divinatory abilities next to that stargazer, Orican. I do believe I will be able to benefit from his foresight if we continue working together. Be Ishakar. I spent the last three years in meditation, which more or less means I'm getting as close to the approximation of sleep as possible. I've mostly used this time to block out any intrusive thoughts and just allowing myself to literally recharge. Oh hey, that orb on my back? I just find it's some sort of resurrection orb matrix. It's more or less four orbs combined into a single orb matrix. That would certainly explain why everything is basically uber charged when I wake them. Something that was installed at the request of the Pharaon when Issachar was just a cryptech and not me. Speaking of... I should read up on myself more. Or is that just called remembering? I was only 24 in my old life and I've already lived another 36 just as a Necron. Kind of spooky to think about. I try to start remembering things that this Cryptek has in his memories. He seemed a bit eccentric in the way that all Cryptechs are. He apparently had a collection of all sorts of materials back in that tomb world. It kind of reminds me of a dragon's hoard. Some of the medals would be nice to test out. Oh yeah. There was those two split seconds of flashbacks I haven't had the time to process. I can't seem to find where in my memories they are. It's just the edge of my consciousness, just out of reach. I got to very, very momentarily see some overlord lady and some necrotear. I'm not sure what triggered those buried memories, but I'd like to know more about them. I get a ping from Trezan. It looks like he's ready to talk again. Hey guys, so are you looking to spice up your game night? Do you need some orcs to raid your camp? Do you need some elithids to suck out your brains? Do you need some undead to rise from the graves? What about a dragon to slap down in the table and fuck up your players with? Or if you prefer a frost giant or a manticore, we got them. It's a lot more fun than dropping rocks in your players' heads. Or maybe you just want short stacks. Because we know you love them. <laughs> We have such an expansive range of fantasy options and we're currently trying to expand into not 40k. (laughs) Also, if models isn't your thing, go check out our subclasses. There's loads of stuff there that you might find interesting. But go ahead and check it out. Links are all down below and let's get back into the video. I head to the bridge of the ship, interrupting the meditations of every cryptech on deck. I have Trezan's face projected up in the foes glyph panel. I take it you've rested well, Cryptek, Trezan opened with. I have, though it wasn't easy knowing that you had already acquired one third of my ship's supply of Blackstone. I snapped back. Ah, was all he could say. Anyways, the Blackstone doesn't matter. What does matter is our next steps. I need a powerful catalyst if we're going to wake an entire tomb world. This venture could very well take a century and some change even with the help of the High Metallurgy. Trezan was having Sinep prepare all the resources we needed for this venture. He would be getting a meeting set up with the Awakened Council to get the green light on this operation. The details went over it involved Sanet and I constructing Necron dimensional gates between both our dynasties for ease of transit and communication between our worlds. Sanet was also to prepare an additional gate on my tomb world. We would be using this to evacuate what restored Necrons we could find on that world. This was going to be a lengthy process. Eight years to get home, twelve years to prepare resources, twenty-five to get the gates up, and at least sixty-eight before Trezan calls the Awakened Council to see what they think in the matter. The return trip was quiet. The void kraken was nowhere to be seen. After seeing we were safe, we jumped beyond light speed. When I tried to challenge Agahet to match the battle fleet gothic, I got utterly obliterated. He lulled me into thinking I was having a good start. After 25 different rounds, I admitted defeat to him. I literally can't beat him anymore. 
He plays like he's some world-ranked champion. He doesn't gloat about it loud, but there is some BM going on. Did he really just spend 20 plus years training to beat me in Battlefleet Gothic 2? We finally return to our small section of territory. When the ship touches down and I command the cryptex to pull up existing void maps on our records, I send them off to record as much information and make a comprehensive map. In the future I'm going to need a full map of everything. I have a lot of maps tucked away in my head since I've studied up on where each faction is located. But now I'm going to need to see the maps with actual measurements and not just lore art. Pulling up my own maps I narrow down on where our territory sits. And boy is it a fucking travesty. I made way for my own quarters. I let Chari off my shoulder as I stepped in. Sprawling across dozens of surfaces were phyroglyph tablets. Variant designs of the several categories of Canoptech constructions were etched into their surfaces. Some of the designs had large X marks covering up a few design of spider, wraiths and some sort of amalgam of both. One tablet didn't show one strange Canoptech design. Instead I saw a tomb blade that had been upgraded to a weapons platform. For some reason looking at that made my head twitch. Why was all this in my quarters? I'm just a cryptech, right? Transmutation and technomancy, the two underrepresented disciplines because they're kind of trash. Why would you need to transmute anything when you're already using the best metal in the galaxy? The technomancy should only be used for fixing and strengthening tech, right? My own neural matrices fire unsuccessfully and cycling logic chains fail. What am I thinking? It's my brain that's failing, right? Not metal and circuits. This is just a pounding headache. I walk deeper into the room, knock some books, phyroglyph tablets, and I head deeper into my room. I came here to check my collection of metallic paints. Sedimentary cash, right? I open one of the cabinets and look over what I have. I pull up all the spray cans of Citadel paint, unrefined oh, ores, out. I lift up a large can of lead belcher spray and give it a quick shake. This would be a good base. Tossing up one can into the air and catching it. It's a can of Mephiston Red. Getting low on you, buddy. I pull out another two cans. Rune Lord Brass and Chaos Black. I got tired and just started pulling most of them up without consideration. Zandri Dust. Munitorium Varnish. Grey Shear. Death Guard Green. Macrag Blue. Mechanicus Standard Grey. Huh. No Retributor Armour. Oh. Hey, at least I have this bit of wraithbone. As I reach into the one cabinet, I feel my headache vanish entirely. It was probably nothing. I pulled up a weird horn-shaped length of this wraithbone substance. It sits nicely when I place it next to all the metals and weird xeno materials. All of these would look particularly interesting to run tests on, particularly this bit of wraithbone. Some master artisans among the Eldars are able to weave this stuff between even molecules. I wonder if I can replicate that myself. I'm no bone singer, but as a transmuter, surely there is enough overlap in skills. I try altering its shape, and to my immediate disappointment, the material simply cracks under the pressure, sending shards stabbing harmlessly into my necrodermis frame. Maybe not a good idea to keep messing with it. I'll move on to another experiment. I walk back to the centre of the room, away from the metals. No idea how all these phyroglyph tablets were somehow all knocked down. While picking up one, I might as well try and see about getting something done while I have the free time. I check out one of these tablets and look over a design for a possible variant pattern of wraiths. Two designs for a new wraith variant. A Canoptex Scorpioid and its complement pair of Canoptep Scorpiettes. It was a large Canoptep unit armed with hyperphase thresher claws, a phase shifter and a particle shredder. And two smaller units also wielding hyperphase thresher claws a phase shifter and a particle caster. The pattern was never finished, so I've decided to finish what this old cryptic couldn't on his own. I called Duracell and two additional wraiths into my chambers. Duracell? <laughs> like the battery? <laughs> I'm going to assume so. For you guys that don't know, um, okay, so all them medals are actually Games Workshop paint names. Paint names, yeah. And, of course, the boxes, well, okay, the, the boxes of models. The, well, the, the fire, fire glass. Fire, yeah. They're the, boxes. Yeah, they're like boxes Workshop of models. Bottle. Yeah. I thought it was a really nice touch, but yeah. let's keep going. Surprisingly, it seems no construct can enter into this chamber without express permission. Quite literally unable to phase into the room either. In any case, I get to work repurposing Duracell and his allies. 
It's a long process of constantly dismantling them, making improvements and hot fixes to the destabilization matrix due to the extra mass and non-standard parts. Keeping the electromagnetic field coils from not burning out was a problem. But it seems transmuting and adding an auramite is going to just be a recurring fix for getting things to work. All in all, a fun seven year project to make. Honestly, honestly, the, actual for, time. Actual time it takes for a lot of people to paint their fucking armies. <laughs> yes. I've came across a lot of people that can paint maybe half a model a month. It's <laughs> actually ridiculous. While that was a fun pet project, it will have its uses in the long term. When we finally reach precipice, these hyperphase thresher claws will be useful for gathering materials and carving through blackstone. Currently, these three are the original patterns and are still technically in the testing phase. Once I see them in the field a bit, I'll use that data to make improvements before mass producing them. Actually, it wouldn't be that bad of an idea to also use them for harvesting blackstone ore deposit. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Chari immediately turns to me. I think this little scarb is recognising when I start to make references. I instruct Chari to watch over Duracell and his two underlings. Now affectionately named Double A's. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, I like that. Chari will be gathering information for me. In the meantime, I suppose I'll start up on practice on my combat routines. This is a dangerous galaxy, so it wouldn't hurt to actually be competent in battle. After leaving my lab and locking up, I summon Lich Guard Agahet. Agahet, I'm going to need your assistance with something. He immediately takes a knee. I'm at your command, Cryptek, he announces. Agahet moved into an empty chamber so we could do a bit of sparring. I'm going in with just my harp. And it's about time I actually run through what my harp does beyond sitting pretty on my hip and making tiny strands of oramite. As I've said before, it has 12 different strings. Each string is calibrated to a certain tension level. I haven't been using it for its intended design, and instead been remixing the power of the chords to make new things. It can do so much more than create and destroy. So let me just run through what each chord does. The Architect's Chord. This chord enables one to transmutate blackstone into an amorphous, making it malleable and better suited for designing structures. The Chord of Entropy. The note released from this chord is the most commonly used in combat. It will rapidly dissolve molecular bonds, destroying its stability. The Dissonance Chord. When played, the molecular structure of most organic life forms is rapidly transmuted into gas. The Geomancer's Chord. When struck, the note will rapidly destabilise sediment in the slurry of molten slag. When strummed, it can do the reverse and transmute sediment into crystalline substance. God Shattering Chord Made from the fractal Catan shard of the Deceiver's essence. When this chord is struck, it destabilises and wounds the very being of the loathsome Catan. The Iconoclast Chord Made from a fractal of what could be presumed the outsider, this note temporarily transmutes the necrodermis into the Catan's phase necrodermis. Such use of this string is incredibly dangerous and immensely draining. The Metallurgist Chord When played, metals of particularly dense molecular composition will expand, heat and feverishly bond with any surrounding matter, instantly seeking to transmute into something new. The Phasmaster's Conduct Chord. This chord draws in all ambient energy to suddenly cluster together and transmute into small floating motes of orbs of volatile and unknown masses, effectively making random electrical or phasma mines floating in the air. The Fortification Chord. This chord rapidly expands out molecules of surface. This makes its target rise out before slamming the molecules forcefully together. Often, this formation results in particularly dense barriers to hide behind. The Induction Cord When strummed, the cord rips energy from all caught in the sonic cone. It pairs exceedingly in conjunction with the Phasmancer's Conduct Cord, the Waveform Cord. When struck, overcharges steady streams of power into surges of immense overcharged Necron technology in units. It needs a steady power source from the Resurrection Orb Matrix, not to make Necron's units go critical. The Empiric Accord. This one was strange. It had its own micro-stasis field to ensure it was in hurt until it was to be used. All I know about it is that it's a positively warped charged blackstone cord. What exactly that means in terms of usage is unknown. I couldn't begin to comprehend how this cryptic managed all this power. 
As far as my records indicate, he wasn't supposed to be this impressive. Then again, searching through his own neuromatrixes, he wasn't even supposed to be that good of a technomancer. The disconnect in the way things have been is a little bit confusing. Well, I must say, I was quite impressed with how he's able to, like, bring, like, it's it, the meta, you know what I mean? Being able to bring in, like, you know, the paints and the models. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys noticed, like, you know, his wee uh, conversion he got with the Dark Elder uh, paint engine. But, like, I thought it was kind of cool. I hope to see more stuff like this in the future, you know what I mean? I think it's, like, I think it's going to be really cool. And the world is still so open, although I am begging for a crossover with Cup on, like yeah. Flesh Prince. I would yeah. love that shit if he shows up. I think it would be really cool, but like, only time will tell. Again, this video was absolutely fucking painful to Took record. Two days to record. Yep, this, this was a two day recorder. Um, Megan cried. It was pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, we got there in the end, so... Uh, I do it for you guys. <laughs> yeah. I do it for you. Yeah. Don't forget, I have extreme baby brain at the moment. Yeah. Every word that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're, pl- we're, we're aiming for is to get a new part out every two weeks to three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Whenever, so, whenever my brain will allow it. Yeah, but it does take us on <laughs> average. Will and also, out. whenever we do do it, we do the entire thread. Yeah. Because I think that's the problem we have with Flesh Prince, where we would just do like, oh, we'll just do like 20 minutes, half an hour, and just cut it off where yeah. the story kind of ended. Yeah. Whereas with this, we kind of want to keep we do it too. the whole thread. Yeah. So and it does take me about two days to do it. Yeah, because it is quite a bit. But yeah. look, I think we're getting there. Just so you guys know, there will be more of it. Like you know, you don't need to ask in every fucking video, guys. We know <laughs> there it will is going to come. More. Uh, it'll be out within the next two weeks. So look, this is an excellent example to be like you press the notification bell. Yeah. So actually you'll see it whenever we upload next. Kind of works. Like as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time anyway. All right. Bye.